What I'm looking at right now are these really bulbous pillow flows. They're really rich in volcanic glass. That lava that's been erupted on the seafloor has quenched and cooled really quickly, and that's preserved this glassy state of that lava that we use for subsequent geochemical analysis. The crust itself is about over 90% silicate minerals. While most of the ocean's silica input comes from rivers, about 20% comes from weathering of the seafloor, including pillow basalts like these. And so what's always interesting to me is these biologic organisms that also have silica-based skeletons and how they depend on the silica that's in the water column that might be derived ultimately from volcanic products to build their skeletons. It's interesting to say that we just passed over two glass sponges, the hexactinellida and the glass sponges. Uh, the glass in the name refers to all the silica that they've incorporated into their skeleton. And one of the cool things is to think about how all of these elements of the earth are interconnected. Because to get the silica to deposit in the skeleton, they have to take it out of the water. And where is it coming from the water? It's probably dissolved or has been released from the interior of the earth or uh, the weathering of the rocks that you were just talking about. In one study that's been published, it's been shown that sponges can take up approximately 36% of the silica that's dissolved in seawater. It's uh, one big cycle.